Hi, it's Mike Stevenson here. In today's video, we're going to talk about how we can monitor and manage an Azure Automation Runbook with Serverless 360. We did a video a few weeks ago talking about um, the module we have for business activity monitoring and how you could monitor PowerShell runbooks. So here we have an example where in, in that video we showed how you could send events to our BAM API and that would allow business users self-service um, business users to be able to do self-service via our BAM portal to see what's going on in some of them PowerShell jobs. So here's the video that we talked about. Um, in today's video, we're going to take a slightly different look at this. So instead of looking at empowering business users to be able to see those key scripts that they care about that might do an automation for their their business function. Today we're going to look at the IT um, support operator and how we can provide features through Serverless 360 to help them do technical management and monitoring. So we take a couple of examples of where you might be using Azure Automation Accounts. So one example would be, let's imagine we've got the Azure Management API and you might have a PowerShell uh, runbook inside an automation account. Maybe it calls out to the Azure API. You do some automation of Azure. You might do something like run a logic app to run that on a schedule or in response to some, some activity. You might also schedule it direct from the automation account. So that's one example where you might be using them. Um, the other things you could do is if, if you're in some kind of integration architecture, at the Integrate 2023 Summit, we talked about this reference architecture for integration around an HR system. And here we had an example where we had a PowerShell runbook in that architecture that was triggered from a logic app that did some activity against Exchange. So there's a few different places I think people will be using Azure Automation runbooks. Um, the problem that most of our customers tell us is that um, they have a, a sort of... Um, a bottleneck on the um, availability of Azure experts in the organization. So the, these are people who are highly skilled in using Azure, would be doing different kinds of solutions in Azure. In this case, it's going to be the PowerShell expert or the automation expert. And what happens is these people end up, as, as you build more solutions, the support burden um, becomes too challenging for them. So they're doing, spending all the time doing support and not time delivering new scripts, new automations, delivering value. So what we want to do with Serverless 360 is if we can push support to the left, in this case, we're going to look at the level two um, support operator. So can we let them have the ability to, to act on a job that might fail? And um, that'll take some of that load off the the as your experts, so they can be working on new stuff. The kind of by um, using Serverless 360, you'll also have a more holistic and better sort of support experience by seeing the big picture architecture in your solutions as well. So, if we take a look um, at the modules we've got, so in the previous video, we talked about this module here, the business activity monitoring, but today we're going to be looking at the business application uh, module within Serverless 360. So here we are in the Azure portal, and you can see up on the, the top here, I've got my tree view representing the support view. Down here, I've got my human resources area, and I've got this app here managing the exchange um, integrations. And here I've got my automation runbook for act, um, activating a mailbox. So if we take a look, um, if we take a look at the features we have. So we've added the ability to see the run history of the jobs that you've got. So you can see which ones failed, which ones, um, which ones might have had an error or been successful. You can see over here on the right, we've got some actions so that would let you replay or pause a job if there was a problem with it. You can see over the top here, we've got things like being able to trigger a new run of this runbook if you need to. Now, we also have the monitoring tab here. So this is where you can configure some, um, some monitoring that you would like for this job. So I can enable my failed jobs monitor here and I can put some thresholds. So in this case, I'm saying if there's one failure since we last checked the status of this job, 
raise a warning that would then make the tree view light up yellow that there could be a problem it'll trigger your notifications and then if there's more than one so if you get two or more um, failures that would trigger the alerts to tell us there's an error and that could um, trigger your you know your alerts in the service now or something like that now we do have the ability here to put a note if i want to give some guidance to the support team to tell them what kind of things they might want to do if this job's reporting errors you can see i've, I've also got this um, configuration here of an action so an action's a way of providing some compensation for this error so we could you know we could have it an indicator that we've got some failures on this job and then you can trigger an automated task which we'll look at in a second via this action so what i've actually done here is you'll notice the name of this automated task is um it's to trigger another run book which i'll show in a moment and basically i could build a run book that's um going to compensate for this one failing and then serverless 360 would trigger that when there was an error so if we go back um back over into the application level here in fact actually i'll just move my tree you can see there's a second run book here so we go into the application and here we've got the automated tasks area so i can go and create a new automated task with a run book here and i can basically configure a schedule that says um you know trigger this run book um so previously i picked this one here so i can say here's an automated task that'll trigger that run book that'll go and do whatever the run book does now here you can see on the screen i've got the one that i've set up previously um what I can do here, so as well as running this as a compensation for a failure, if I've got my level two support operator who's not comfortable navigating Azure and doing stuff in Azure with a simple bit of training, we could just get them to trigger this um, this run book from here. So if you look um, in the actions area, so I could just trigger a run of this job here. So we just say, yeah, we'll run that. That, that could allow you to have a really easy way as the the IT expert, I can just let the support operator run this job on demand. So maybe we've got some stuff that we do as an automation. We just need a UI to allow them to trigger that job when there's some problem. So we can we can offload that repetitive task to the support team who don't need to be as your experts to trigger it. So hopefully that gives you a quick overview how we've added some features to enable IT support people to monitor automation run books to look for failures and um, create automated tasks to be able to, to trigger these jobs and, and use your automations to help drive a much more mature type of monitoring in Serverless 360. Thanks for listening to today's video and um, hopefully we'll have another video that you'd like to check out soon.